Welcome all to part one of a series I'm going to be doing here. Um, just a series of brief videos where I include a handful of uh, tips and tricks and uh, uh, functions that I use in Reason to help uh, improve my workflow. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on part one here. And we'll start with a bit of technical information, actually. And that is actually when you are recording audio within Reason, you uh, really want to sh shoot for having your input signal around minus 12 dB uh, on the meter. So uh, with my audio track here, if I control F3 and bring up the recording meter here, you can use this whenever you're recording an instrument or vocals. It gives you a, a nice big readout of what your levels are. And so minus 12 is what you want to shoot for. Within reason, uh, these bars all the way up until 12 are going to be green. Once you go past minus 12 dB, they're going to turn a orange color here. So, uh, you know, you've already got a set indicator here to let you know what type of signal you should be looking for. If you're using a 16-bit audio interface, then a couple dB higher or so would be good. But uh, if you're using 24-bit, minus 12 dB is what you want to shoot for. Now, uh, on to the next item. Um, a quick way to create an automation lane in the sequencer. I'll F6 and bring up the uh, rack. So any parameter that you'd like to automate in an instrument or effect or even uh, things on the mix channel, if you hold down Alt while you click on that parameter, Reason will then create a parameter automation lane uh, in the sequencer. So if I say choose frequency here uh, and hold down Alt and click on that, Reason will bring automatically bring up the sequencer and show you that created lane. So I'll go ahead and Alt click. And now we have filter A frequency. You see it corresponds here to filter A. And the frequency has this green border showing that there is automation active. We don't have a clip in here with any actual automation, but it is it is live. So if there was something in here, it'd, it'd be active. OK, so I'll control Z and undo that. And one other thing uh, while we're on automation that I'd like to talk about is F6 to maximize this. When you are, typically if you want to record automation, you can go ahead and create a track like we just did and uh, draw a clip in and draw your own automation in. But this one of the simplest way actually would be to just hit record, I'll turn my click off by pressing C, and turn the knob that you'd like to tweak. Okay, so, uh, and actually I botched that up because I didn't have the MIDI track selected. So the first thing you want to do is actually select the track and be sure that you've got the automation armed. So we'll F6 and go to the rack. I'll hit record. Okay, now, and another thing to note, if you, in the bottom right corner here on the transport bar, you see automation override, and we don't have that green border that we had before. Um, now, in order to make that pop up and the automation order override to go away, you would need to hit stop again. But if you're recording automation, say, and you've got a loop going, and you don't want to stop, but you do want to make that automation live, you just click the automation override down here, and you'll see that this you'll get the border, which means your automation is live. 
and we actually did record it this time so just let that be a lesson to you be sure that you have the uh, track the MIDI track selected and that your automation is armed for recording and as you can see we have the clip here so uh, but the main reason why I'm showing you this is that there typically you'd want to record on separate lanes it just gives it it makes editing more flexible and and you you can do more creative things but there may be an instance where you would like to record all of your automation into the one MIDI clip here where you have your MIDI notes just for making it more transportable or whatever the need may be just you should know that it can be done so I'm gonna delete that get rid of that lane uh, select that clip so you can go into edit and um, or actually options and record automation into note clip so be sure you have that selected be sure your track is armed we'll F6 to the rack I'll hit record Okay, and see you get you've got that automation override again that you could click to make it active, but I'll just hit stop again and that accomplishes the same thing. Um, so F7 back into the sequencer and as you can see your automation is now included in the uh, MIDI note. So we'll expand this here. So you can see it here, it's all contained in the one MIDI clip. Okay, so maybe that's a bit more helpful so you can see what's going on here. And so I'll escape out of the editor. Um, so just know that you have the option for self-containing your automation in one clip if you ever need to have a situation where you need to do that. Now, um, if you ever, uh, th there are a couple different ways that you can add a clip if you want to manually do it. Now, you can hit W and bring up your pencil and just draw that in. How you how it's drawn in is going to be affected by your snap value. So I'm set to bar, so you can see that um, it's kind of jumping there by bar. If I set this to 16th notes then it's going to be a bit smoother and more you have more fine control. But what I'd like to show you is that you don't even need to bring up the pencil tool. If I press Q and bring up the selection tool you can double click and hold on that second click and just drag. And there without having to go to the keyboard you've got your clip. So just on that second clip, you hold and just drag. OK. And yet another way is just pressing Alt while the selection tool is on or selected. Just will temporarily give you the pencil tool. And if you let go of the Alt key, it goes back to the selection tool. OK, so pressing Alt will bring that up for you as well. So that's yet another way. The more information you have, I feel like the, the you know the better. It doesn't hurt and can help in being more productive. Okay. Um, one other thing is with resizing clips. We'll talk about that for a second. You can select a clip and you've get, got the arrows on either side. Of course, you can drag in, and I'm actually going to change my snap back to bar. So you can drag in, and that's one way to resize. Another way that you can resize is by using the inspector. So you can just hit the down arrow. Or if you've got an 11 bar clip, as the inspector is showing, 
just double click say you only wanted five hit five and there you go I'm gonna control Z now with resizing clips with MIDI clips in particular if you have resized, resized a clip notice that there are no markers on these corners here but if you do resize and you cut off notes you see you instantly get these white borders in the corner and that's the same for the right or left side if I move this in and cut off MIDI notes you're gonna get those borders well if you only want to use the information that's contained in there you you know that's something that you'd like to do instead of double clicking there and going in and selecting notes here then selecting notes here I'll escape out of that editor you can simply right click on the clip and choose crop events to clips now they're gone these bars are still here simply because they actually start in bar 7 they start in this bar so that's why they're still there um, but if I double click you know the other information is gone these are just they begin here and so that's why they start if I drag that in and you see these turn blue um, and then you have these white borders again I'll right click crop events to clips and now you just have these and the blue unused MIDI notes are gone so I'll escape out of the editor and control Z a few times just to bring everything back and so that's just a handy way to clean up your clips if you've got MIDI notes that you are no longer using and the last thing we'll cover in this part one is something to help you with organizing and finding your way around the uh, arrange pane and identifying clips your clips actually can be named whether it's a parameter automation clip audio or MIDI just with whichever one it is just right click on it and add labels to clip type in your name and there you are just something anything to help you navigate a bit more quickly and identify what's going on is a good thing so thanks for joining me in part one and look forward to uh, seeing you in part two hope that some of this has been helpful for you all right thanks